on the TV. Maybe, maybe not. All right. Well, good to see everyone this morning, or good to have you this morning. Um, praise the Lord. We um, we decided that yesterday we had an ice storm, and there was a, a significant number of people who were um, affected by that. We have people, um, uh, one family still has uh, no power. And um, trees down everywhere. And um, Jesse, the um, all the caps thing is on. Do we want that? Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Okay, I didn't know that. All right, I just want to make sure we're going to mess up and be say something that put it there. Something I didn't say. Okay, all right, um, but we, you know, we have uh, a couple of families that have been dealing with um, uh, coming out of COVID pr protocols, and um, you know, with the ice storm yesterday and trees down and power down, we just thought it's just a b better call to go ahead and say let's just do virtual today, um, which is not a big difficult thing to do anymore. We're we're completely set up to be able to go virtual quickly um, and on the fly. Um, and whereas in the past, we would have had to make a decision not to be able to have service at all, we can now go virtual and have service online, um, which makes those kind of decisions uh, easier to make because uh, we're still able to minister and share the word and not um, miss a, a, a week of being together this way. Uh, don't, we'll be back on next Sunday. Don't forget Tuesday night prayer. Uh, if you've not been in our prayer meeting yet and want to be, uh, you can uh, uh, contact us through office at fvc.org. Give us your phone number uh, and your name. And that. And um, fvc.org. And, um, or you can um, text it to 336 852 zero zero eight eight that's the church line uh we um we have a cell phone connected to that line and you can um text it to that and we can get it and then we can add you to the uh zoom meeting zoom prayer meeting on tuesday nights and um 
I would say the past couple of weeks have been really good. Uh, as we started this, the Lord's directed us. On Sunday. Uh, from the um, protocols. So praise the Lord. All right. So we've been, um, uh, thank God that uh, you're a child of God. I'm a child of God. It's good to be in the family of God. Uh, thank God that Jesus is Lord. Thank God that we are living in the uh, hour in which we're calling to the earth for such a time as this. Hallelujah. <clears throat> it is our time and calling and purpose as, as, as individual members of the body of Christ and as a local church. Praise God. And uh, reaching our city, our state, and the nations with the gospel. Praise God. <clears throat> it's time to give. If you need an offering envelope, uh, we don't give out virtually. So praise the Lord. We just have to use the uh, electronic means of uh, PayPal. Uh, and the information is up. will show up on your screen here in a second. Uh, PayPal. Uh, I, I forget. Donations at FBC.org. And then uh, Cash App is something like dollar sign Faith Victory Church. Um, but that'll show up on your screen and, uh, we can, you can give electronically. We do appreciate that. Um, it's, it's just such a blessing that, um, <clears throat> we have these means to, um, communicate even when in difficult times, when the normal way of doing everything isn't available or, um, where we can get it done that way. Praise the Lord for means to get, a, get around that. Although I still think it's very important. We meet in person. Um, more so than online, um, it is is vital, you know, that we break bread together, we spend time together, we fellowship together, uh, even in the midst of a quote worldwide pandemic. Uh, the body of Christ needs each other. Can you say glory to God? <clears throat> Hallelujah! But um, your information is up there on the screen right now. So um, use those to use your electronic means for giving. Praise the Lord, and um, and then we'll move right along. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the tithers and the givers. We thank you they're blessed. We thank you that you're bringing finances to us uh, <clears throat> through the people of God, that we have our own place. You expand our, our habitation. You bring us into our own building. Uh, glory to God. And we're able to do the work of God that you called us to do in the name of Jesus. We bless your name and thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Can I get a <clears throat> glory to God? All righty. So um, glory. Just giving you a second for the offerings to kind of uh, get sent and um, check on people that, you know, you know, um, around you and where you're living, make sure they're all OK. Um, we had northern northern part of the county got much more ice, I think, than we did down here. We got ice down here, but. I think Northern County got more. <clears throat> Those who live maybe in Northern counties, uh, Forsyth or Alamance, you got neighbors and friends, check on them, make sure they're okay. Glory to God. Let's go ahead and open our Bibles, uh, if you will, once again to the second letter of Peter or the second epistle of Peter. Hallelujah. Um, going into chapter one. Glory to God. We've been talk, talking and ministering on um, Christian character. Christian character. Um, this is important in our growth. You know, um, Paul wrote and said uh, that if I have, if, you know, if I have faith can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Excuse me, I thought it was a little dry and I needed to get that taken care of. <clears throat> um. Our character is important. Creflo Dollar said something one time. He said, um, um, money is a magnifier. You get a lot of money and you don't have, uh, it just magnifies the character that you do have. And so it's important we develop the right character. And I think one of the things we missed in teaching like biblical prosperity and people call it the prosperity gospel and all this kind of stuff, but it's biblical finances. You know, God wants to bless his people and so forth. Um, but one of the things we, we tended to leave out overall was character. 
Because we've got to have the right character to handle things, to handle the things of the Spirit, to handle finances, to handle a life, uh, and be effective for the kingdom. It's not just about you being blessed and living um, comfortable. It's about, really, our mission is, is to reach the lost and to, and to win them to Jesus and to serve God. So uh, having our character right is important, praise the Lord. Let's read these first 11 verses as we've done already a few times. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine uh, power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye may, may, may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith. Remember, we all obtain like precious faith. <clears throat> virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered or added uh, unto you abundantly in the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise God. Now, we've read this numerous times over the weeks because it's our foundation text. And, uh, but it's kind of one to, you know, uh, rebrief you. Hallelujah. You know, faith being uh, our, persuade, our belief, what we believe. Um, hallelujah. And then we went on into, you know, virtue, uh, which is not dunamis, not miracle working power, but it meant valor or holy excellence, moral power. We're to have moral power. Boy, boy. If, I mean, if we understand that, that having morality is so important, uh, in your walk with God. Um, knowledge is no sin, you know, and, um, use of the Greeks and, um, it means awareness, intelligence, insight. Praise the Lord. And then we went into a temperance, uh, self-control, mastery over your temper and over all physical appetites, patience, uh, hupomino, uh, not, not a quiet resignation to one's fate, uh, but a heroic perseverance in serving Christ <clears throat> in spite of opposition. Then godliness was piety, devoutness, uh, holiness, praise the Lord, piety towards God, brotherly kindness, Philadelphian or phileo, uh, fraternal love, fondness for a brother or sister in Christ and charity, agapeo or agape, meaning, as we like to say oftentimes, the God kind of love, love unconditionally. And uh, so we get down, we read these, and then, and then the entry says, he says, in verse 8, Peter comes back and goes, for if these things be in you and abound. All right. So let's stop and think about that for a second. If these things be in you and abound, this is dependent upon the spirit filled life, the, the living in the spirit, living in the spirit. Glory to God. The Holy spirit being our guide, being our teacher indwelling us, bringing us in and being reminded of all things that Jesus taught us. Hallelujah. That working in us, 
Spirit-filled life is going to be necessary to be able to have these things in us and abound. Hallelujah. Praise God. <clears throat> uh, he, he said, when Peter enumerated these characteristics in verses 5 and through 7, <clears throat> um, he said they should be in us and abound, which means to increase exceedingly, to overflow. Hallelujah. Not just there, but f uh, overflowing in us. Remember Jesus said, um, he talked about the Holy Spirit being rivers of water. For as yet he was not given unto many, uh, given unto them. Hallelujah. <clears throat> he said that, the, you know, that, that, that life would cause rivers of living water. See, the Bible talks about the new birth as wells springing up unto everlasting life. But the baptism in the spirit as rivers of of living water flowing out of us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so we need to understand that these things are to be in us and abound, to be in excess, to be an overflow. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, it's the Christian character um, that is formed in us as we develop these qualities and ingrain them in our life as they become uh, a, a necessary aspect of our walk with God. Hallelujah. As we yield to the Holy Ghost. Now, let me say this. Uh, there's been, I saw a recent post from a, from a pastor friend recently about, um, or a minister friend. People are, are uh, they use this poo-pooing on the scripture. You know, going, well, I have a relationship with a person. Um, the Bible's good, but I have a relationship with a person. And these are all steps into undermining the authority of scripture. And then they will use scriptures to, un, to make their argument they don't need the scriptures. You know, search the scriptures, friend, then you think you have eternal life. But Jesus also turned around and said, uh, you don't know the scriptures. Hallelujah. The word of God is where the Holy Ghost leads us. Without the authority of the word of God, we cannot be assured that when we hear a voice, if it's God or not. Now, well, I got a goosebump. I know it's the Lord. People get goosebumps watching the Blair Witch Project. And that's not God. You can't go by feeling. There has to, you know, um, the word of God is forever settled in heaven. It doesn't change. Hallelujah. And so, this walk with the Lord as a Holy Ghost works to build and develop these things in our life. He's going to do it through the Word. So it's important that we cooperate with the Holy Spirit, that we yield to His guidance and leadership, that we submit to Him as He teaches us and reveals to us Scripture, as He develops uh, through the Word, these different aspects in our lives. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're getting a whole lot of hand claps. <laughs> Hallelujah. I think it was an accident. <laughs> well, it was, it was good anyhow. It was really good. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, if, the, if you don't say amen, God's going to raise up stones. So go ahead and give me a bunch of hand claps. And so he says here that when we, if these things be in us and abound, now listen, not just in you, but abounding, You've de you're developing them, increasing them. Hallelujah. You shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of God or, or Jesus, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, barren means useless or ineffective. Nor unfruitful, unproductive. So he says if the characteristics that we are to develop Uh, hey, welcome back. Praise the Lord. Uh, sorry, we, um, it just totally went, it went, totally went away. Well, we're glad, we're glad you're back. Okay. Experiential knowledge. That's where we left off. Hallelujah. Um, 
In case you were wondering, we're talking about the, the epinosis. So you, in, in the knowledge, so he says here that we'll neither be, neither be uh, useless, ineffective, or unproductive in the experiential knowledge, the intimate acquaintance, and full discernment, hallelujah, of Jesus Christ, glory to God, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. In, in the knowledge, and so... When we have these things in us and abound, it's important. Well, I know all about Jesus. I know all about the Bible. I know all about God. But if these things aren't in you and abounding, then you can be unproductive, unfruitful, and um, ineffective with that knowledge. It doesn't do any good. Okay? So it's important that we understand that we must have these characteristics in us and abounding so that, and because see, the, the, the reciprocal of that is that if they don't abound in you, that you are going to be ineffective. Um, you are going to be uh, useless. You are going to be unproductive with your knowledge of Jesus. Because what? Not having character can... You, can may, you may be able to know all the Bible and you may be able to quote scripture and speak in tongues and shout real loud in church. But if you're running around with other women in the church, you're ineffective in your knowledge of Jesus. Yeah, thank you for your enthusiasm. If you're ripping people off, you're ineffective in your knowledge of Jesus Christ. If you're mean and hateful and hate people, you're ineffective in your knowledge of Jesus Christ. You may know it. You may know all the things you're supposed to know. But it'll be, you'll be ineffective, useless, and unproductive. So it's important that we add these things and we develop these things in our lives here in first, uh, Second Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. Okay? So as we develop these qualities, we want to have, create and come to the goal Verse 8, 2 Peter chapter 1, if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you should, you should either be barren, useless, hallelujah, or ineffective, nor unfruitful, unproductive, in your epinosis, epinosin, again, a variant of epinosis, um, clear, precise, accurate, intimate knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We want our knowledge of him and his indwelling in us to make us productive for the kingdom, fruitful in the kingdom, useful in the kingdom. Amen. But he that lacketh these things, well, if you're not having them in you are in abounding virtue and godliness and temperance and patience and uh, brotherly love and godly love and faith, if you don't have these things in you and abounding, if you lack them, you're blind and cannot see afar off and have forgotten that you were purged from your old sins. Now, uh, blind comes from uh, tuphlos, T-U-P-H-L-O-S, um, in the Greek, and it means uh, sightless or partially so. You can't see afar off. Um, so he says here that you shall be Blind and cannot see afar off, a phrase that comes from a Greek, uh, in, from Greek literature that actually meant nearsighted. Now, I'll have to say, you know, there's a lot of people I know that they get into the Bible and they become nearsighted. What? It's all about me. Everything they learn, everything they do, everything, is, you know, it's all about them. It's about their finances, it's about their body, it's about their household, it's about them, 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 them. It's only about me, you know. Remember that, that song we have in the church today, It's All About You, Jesus? They sing it, It's All About Me. Okay? Um, that's nearsightedness. We have to be able to see um, afar off. We have to have clear vision for the purposes of God, which is salvation for the lost, winning the lost, bringing them into the kingdom of God. It is so important that we do that and that we see clearly, praise God. And the near per light sighted person, this person we're talking about, the one that lacketh these things, that we were to add to our faith, okay? Virtue, godliness, no uh, knowledge, temperance, patience, phileo, and um, 
agape, you know, brotherly love and, and, and godly love. You, you've forgotten that you were purged from your own sins, your own sins, your old sins. Hallelujah. In other words, you lose the heart to serve God with everything in you. To be tools in the master's hand to reach humanity. That your life is hid with Christ. You're no longer your own. And you begin to develop a self-centered, we can really develop a self-centered theology that we go to the scriptures and everything we look for in the word of God is what's in it for me. <clears throat> and when we take, and we have done it, scriptures and, and, and biblical themes up and elevated them out of the, the rest of the Bible, you know, God wants you to bless. Well, he does. God's given us exceeding great and precious promises. Yes. You know, um, he's given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Yes. But when you elevate that out of the whole and only think along those lines, you'll become self-centered. It's important. Yes. And we teach prosperity. We teach healing. We teach, you know, the blessings of God. Um, there, that's all true biblical things. We're not going to not teach. We, we, we will not withhold teaching it because people get in excess with it. But when, now we come back on this and we come back and we bring this back into proper perspective that all these things are, had to be taken in part with the whole, some whole of developing us to a place that we're, that we're useful, effective and productive and our knowledge of Jesus so that we can reach the world with the gospel. So that we can reach humanity with truth. So that we can set the captives free. The ultimate end of, of biblical prosperity is not so you can have six houses, two yachts, four jets, and 16 cars. Well, God wants me blessed. Yeah, but he doesn't want you blessed and then you hoard it up and people go to hell. Our churches need things so they can reach the communities, but you don't do it unless you've got, you know, um, aircraft tensile strength uh, cable attached to it so that there's, you know, instead of a string attached to it, it's aircraft tensile cable, tensile strength. You know, I got my money, but I will manipulate how I want it done. No, no, no. God doesn't want you to be blessed so that you can then try to control the church. That's the world's way of doing stuff. We control you with our money. That's the spirit of Antichrist. That's why you have to have agape, the love of God, brotherly love. You've got to have uh, you know, godliness. You've got to be pious towards God and the purposes of God. Because if you don't and you get, you get wealthy, you'll misuse that. Thank you for your enthusiasm. I didn't even see a hand clap come up on that one. Maybe it needs to. Amen. God wants, does not want finance. Because even, even Jesus said you can't serve God and mammon. Hello. Thank you for your enthusiasm. All right. I got some thumbs up. All right. Glory to God. And so it's important we, as we develop these things. And they're in us and abounding that the Holy Ghost is working in us and the Holy Ghost is teaching us and it, we, we are, you know, temperate in all things. We become temperate and master our own lusts and desires. There's a reason Jesus said the woman who gave the two pence gave more than everybody else. Not only did she give everything that she had, hallelujah, not only did she give up and, and give everything that she possessed, she did it with a good heart because she loved, she wanted to bless the kingdom. And then you got wealthy people, extremely wealthy people who don't. Well, you know, it's, um, you know, and, and if they do, there's too many times there's, there's strings attached to it. It can't be that way. I said, it can't be that way. 
Well, God blessed Israel. They had so much money that when they started giving, time, giving offerings to build the temple, they had to tell them to stop bringing it. Yeah, notice they started bringing everything. They started bringing so much. They just started throwing it. I mean, they brought it and piled it up. And we've majored in trying to prove that God wants us to be blessed, which he does, on how much they had. Without really majoring on why they had how much they had. Because the reason they had what they had is so that when God needed it, they would bring it willingly with the right heart. Hello. Come on now. And they started bringing it and, bring, and kept bringing it. They finally had to say, stop. We, don't, we can't handle it anymore right now. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. See, this is what character does in you. Because you become about the things of God and not about you. Take no fault, Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33, or 5, 33. Which one is, guys? Y'all know real quick? 6, 33. Take no thought. Hallelujah. No, uh, I said, he, he said, verse 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall you eat, or what shall you drink, or wherewithal shall you be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Now, it doesn't mean that it's wrong to, you know, follow biblical plans of finances and blessing and so forth. But it can't be the governing thought patterns of our life of how I can get rich and how I can, you know, be on Robin Leach's lifestyles of the rich and famous or somebody come up with a Christian version of it. You know, you know, lifestyles of the Christian rich and famous, you know, God gave me this. God gave me that. Yeah. But when God called and said, I have need of it to build my house or to build a church or to do world missions or to do this, uh, it didn't show up in piles. See, there's, there's where we get into problems, okay? So, if these things be in us and abound, glory to God. Can somebody shout hallelujah? I want a hallelujah. All right. Going back over here. If these things be in you and abound, you should need be either barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind, partly partial sight, and cannot see, nearsighted, and hath forgotten. I'll tell you, there are days that we just really need to think about returning and being like it was when we first got saved, just so grateful to God and so loving of God and so thankful to God that we've been born again. Hallelujah. A woman came to Brother Hagin one time and said, I don't feel saved. And, you know, I, I, you know, and, you know, and he, she said, what do you do when, he said, when you get like that or something? And he says, well, I just pray. Lord, I thank you that I'm born again, that I've passed from death unto life. The nature of the Father's in me and that the, the power of sin has been broken off my life. Thank you for the precious gift of the Holy Ghost that I've been baptized and filled to overflowing with the Spirit. Glory to God. See, you get to talking about those things and get to meditating on those things instead of, you know, I want a bigger house or I want more money or I want a yacht or I want to retire and, you know, on the uh, French Riviera and Marseille. And, uh, you know, I want to I want to, you know, live and travel the world and I want to see all the things. Listen. When you get so caught up with God. The th there's nothing this world has that compares with him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah, but you, know, you watch it on TV. Well, TV is, a, a, is an illusion. The TV is an illusion. The lifestyles of people on television are an illusion. And they may have big castles and they may have big homes and they may have this and they may have that. But if you don't have Jesus, you don't have peace. Hallelujah. 
And you, they stored up treasures here where the moth and, corrupt, and, and, and rust does come in and corrupt. Store our treasures up in heaven. Win the lost. Deliver the captives. Set them free in Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. 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 Can you say amen to that? Now, if you would look back in your life and see how God has brought you so far forward, hallelujah, you would see the great advantage of continuing to develop the character of God to its fullest extent possible in a life. Hallelujah. Peter goes on and says in verse 10, wherefore the rather brethren, uh, rather what? Not, wherefore the rather, instead of not developing these things, okay, give diligence. Give diligence in developing these characteristics. Uh, why? Because you want to assure that your calling, which is the, your invitation, the summons of your life, Hallelujah. And your election, uh, selection, your cho being chosen shall never fall. Now, we, we, we don't have time to do a whole Armenian Calvinist doctrine teaching here. Bottom line, you are predestined to be elect because of God's foreknowledge. For whom he did foreknow, he did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. God knew who would. Now, listen, not predestination in the mindset that God determined who would and who wouldn't accept Jesus Christ. Predestination based on God, who God saw who would and who would not accept Jesus Christ. Big difference. Foreknowledge changes the whole doctrine <clears throat> from that of God determined that you're going to hell and there's nothing you can do about it. You're going to heaven. There's nothing you can do about it to God saw who would receive the gift of salvation. God saw who would not. And those who would receive it to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. Hallelujah. So we have a, we have a calling. And we have an election. Amen. And um, he says here, if the make, we will make it sure, steadfast, glory to God. It won't, it won't, uh, they won't fall. They won't stumble. It won't fall. You won't be tripped up in your, in your summons. You won't be um, tripped up in your election. And it will be sure, enduring and guaranteed, uh, coming from Bebeian, B-E-B-A-I-A-N. Uh, that word is used in, in the Greek as like a, you would use for a car warranty. Hallelujah. These things being you in a bound, you're guaranteed not to stumble or fall. Hallelujah. And then verse 11, for so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly in the everlasting kingdom of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Through this, we have an entrance into the everlasting kingdom of God, our inheritance. Hallelujah. And it will, it will be ministered unto us. The word ministered is the same word used earlier that meant to add, hallelujah, amply furnish, contribute to them abundantly, richly. You know that it shall be ministered to us abundantly. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. If you add the Christian characters to your faith, God will abundantly reward you. Only an unmindful and un or nearsighted person could fail to appreciate such a future. Hallelujah. So I, I want to encourage you that as we've talked and shared on all these things over the past, well, since the first of the year, That we take time and set aside and study these, this, this passage of Scripture and begin to make and give all diligence to add to our faith virtue and then give to the virtue add knowledge and to the knowledge add temperance and to temperance patience, patience, godliness, godliness, brotherly kindness. And the brotherly kindness, charity, or, or the God kind of love. That they would become, they would be, they would be added to us, that they would abound in us. Remember, giving all diligence. This means that, that you're going to have to set aside the effort to study, to meditate, allow the Holy Spirit to teach you, to be open to change in your life. That where there are things in your life that, um, 
don't line up with scripture as long in these things you know if you don't have the morality if you don't have patience if you don't have temperance that you allow the spirit to, to chop or to chip away at the short sightedness the near sightedness the blindness those areas calls in your life so that you can see clearly with a pure heart before God how to do his will and his purpose for your life so that you walk in your calling and election to its fullest potential to be fruitful useful and productive in the kingdom of God in reaching humanity transforming their lives being a blessing on the earth that we cause faith and victory church to grow because we're reaching people with the purity of motive and heart that Jesus reached people with because these things through the power of the Holy Spirit working in us are developed and, and in us in abundance we remove more and more of self from everything we do and we allow more and more of him to shine through. And if Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. It is so important that we develop and we grow so that even as John the Baptist said, there must be less of me and more of him. That's a little paraphrase though. Uh, I must decrease, he must increase. Okay. Hallelujah. That we decrease and he increases. The more people see us as we develop and grow in these things, the more they see Jesus. And the more Jesus is lifted up, the more he draws men unto himself. Glory to God. And the kingdom is built and the kingdom is expanded and the enemy loses and the kingdom wins. Glory to God. We will plunder hell and populate heaven. Hallelujah. <clears throat> By becoming less us and more him. In Jesus name. Praise God. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this teaching that we've done. Well, next week we'll begin something new. Hallelujah. Um, but I, I trust you've enjoyed this teaching on, on Christian character. And uh, trust that you will take these things to heart and begin to work on developing uh, them in your life glory to god so that you know the, don't forget to join us on two don't forget to join us on tuesday night for uh prayer if you want to be a part of that prayer service you can text the church phone number of uh, 336-852-0088 um or you can email us at office at fvc.org give us your phone number and your name so that we'll know who you are so we can add you to the zoom meeting then don't forget to wednesday night bible study at seven o'clock until we meet again remember these words from first john chapter five verse four um the um the year of god and have overcome the world a amen hallelujah and i, I think i'm trying to quote first john four four again i keep doing that i keep mixing four four and five four up so i'm gonna go back here whatsoever Whosoever believeth on him overcometh the world. Come on now. I'm so messed up now I can't even get it straight. You ever get that something in your brain like that? I've got, I've got stuff in my brain before I can't. It takes me forever to get it back out. Hallelujah. Okay. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. And we will see you next time here at Faith and Victory Church online and in person. God bless you. Have a great day.